I want to talk to you about simply, you were made for this. Turn to somebody and say, you were made for this. All right, now really mean it and turn to the other person and say, you were made for this. Second Peter in uh, chapter one and verse three simply goes like this. His divine power has given you everything you need. Everybody say everything. everything. Anything that you need, everything that you need required for life and God likeness through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and goodness. Sometimes we just have to be reminded that anything that we're facing, we have everything that we need. That's why I want to talk to you about you were made for this. Recently, we had a move from one place to another. We have moved a lot in our life. We moved from the Midwest. Um, we're experienced movers. We've had some great movers help us, uh, hired, and then some had, uh, helped us, just incredible movers. But this recent move that we had, I'm still going to breathe it out because they did not show up the day of the move. And although they were really great at having another mover sh show up and come talk to us and tell us that they were there to help us move that day, the mover walked up to me and said, we're here for you. The other movers double booked. And so we're gonna be your movers today. And instead of four guys, I got two guys for you. And it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. Well, I would tell you, but it was ridiculous, the price. And then he said, if it takes us a little longer, we might need another leg. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've been in that situation before. You're looking at a situation straight in the eye, and you're like, are you serious? Really? I mean, you're telling me this now? But guess what? You were made for this. You were made for this. <laughs> and so that day, I can't tell you, but probably I can't go into explaining exactly how I feel, but if you have ever experienced anxiety, where all the blood rushes out of your body, and you feel like you're gonna faint. And at that moment, I felt anxiety when this like 10 foot guy comes and tells me that this is what we're gonna do, this is what we're gonna charge you. And I couldn't, at that, that, that exact moment, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to faint or give him a piece of my mind. My first thought was, does he know that I'm a Christian and who I am? Because if he does, then I probably shouldn't give him a piece of my mind. <laughs> Even though the anxiety was hitting me, I was at least thinking to do good or bad. <laughs> do I do good or do I get bad? do bad? And all of a sudden... I began to look around me, and I had had a few people come that morning to help me for just a couple of hours. I had said, hey, um, I have a few things that need to be taken away that I don't want to take to the new place, and uh, do you mind bringing a truck over here and, and uh, pick up this thing? It'll only take you maybe an hour, hour or two, and uh, we'll be good, and it will really help me, and I had some other people coming to help support that, and you know, I had it planned out to the T, and Lo and behold, of course, the movers didn't show up, so this guy is there, and I'm feeling about like I'm about to faint, and I look around and I see my people. 
all of a sudden, there's this lady who comes next to me, and she's got her shoulders back, and something told me if she had a water pistol, she could put every fire out with that little water pistol. And I got to kind of like got one shoulder up. About that time, another couple comes in. The man comes over here to the other side, and we're looking at that man, and I'm kind of like talking it through. I'm looking at this guy over here like, what do you think? And looking over at this one, and then I see the women over here, some, a couple of other women, they're praying, but they're praying with their eyes wide open because they're like, what is she going to do right now? What is she going to do right now? And then I see one guy coming out of just nowhere, one of our facilities guys. He comes out, and he's got his phone, and he goes, we got this. I got people on the way, and we have got this. And I stood back and I looked at that once was 10 foot guy. He became like five feet and I became 10 feet. And I said, you know what we're going to do? We are going to have my people help your people. And we're not going to take two days like you would like. And we're not going to take the price that you want. But we're going to get it done in one day. Now, do you want the job? I don't know how we did it even to this day, but we did it. But a couple of hours into this whole, like, we're going to do this, that guy who gave me a lot of confidence, you know, from a distance, had the phone, got these people coming in, and after a while, I realized we're losing mom momentum here. They're really realizing, like, oh, my goodness, this is going to take a long time. <laughs> and something got into me. I'll just say maybe it was the voice of God, I don't know, but I went over to that gentleman that I could tell the momentum was getting kind of low, and I said, do you know Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago, and he created you? Because one day he knew that you were going to move pastors, Kevin and Sheila, and that you were made for this today. Did you know that? And I saw his shoulders come back. And he was like, that's right. I was made for this. And I thought, hmm. I went over to the next person. <laughs> Did you know? that you were born for such a time as this, <laughs> that God created you, that you were made for this. Those shoulders went back. And so this message came today. <laughs> Number one, whatever challenges that you are facing, God has, oh, here it is. You will never face anything that God hasn't prepared you for. There's nothing. Now, I know I'm just talking about a, 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 a moving thing. You know, it's like, that's not major, you know, but I hope that you can relate that there's a doctor's report that you might have received. Maybe a divorce that you're going through. Possibly it's a loss of, of a loved one. Maybe a friend has abandoned you. And now you're looking at it and you're like, really? Really? I hope that you can put this in perspective and recognize that any challenge, any challenge, God hasn't already prepared you for it. You face something this week and you're thinking, what is going on? God already knew. He knew. He knew. He's like, I got him. I got you ready for this. Come on. Put your shoulders back. Put your head up. You were made for this. Why don't you turn to somebody and say, you were made for this. The best thing that you can do is just tell yourself, we got this. 
We got it. Number two, don't try to control what you can't control. Oh, I'm a controller freak anyway. And then I'm telling myself, don't try to control. Pastor and I, we were on a plane probably about 20 years ago, and we were coming into Chicago O'Hare Airport, and it's called the Windy City anyway, and so you're coming in and you're like going like this, and anytime you go into the Windy City, it's, it, it can be a little shaky and a little up and down, but this, this day, we're on the plane and we're coming down 30,000 feet altitude, and this wasn't the normal landing that we've had coming into Chicago and we glanced over at each other and we felt like this isn't going too smooth and about that time the pilot gets on and he says um, we are attempting to land in O'Hare International Airport and he goes on to start de describing what is happening because of the winds and I'm like I do you got me at attempting that's enough for me I don't need to know any details attempting <laughs> you've been there when you're like I, I, I can't do anything about this this, this is what's happening now, being a controller, I wanted to get up into that pilot seat, take over and say, well, if you're just going to attempt, I can do this. I mean, that's what I felt like. And he looked over, my husband looked over at me, and he said, you're never going to fly with me again, are you? And I'm like, no. And I think I said a few other things. Because for me, I begin to imagine that I'm about ready to be splatted on the ground. The plane's going down. I saw them taking pictures of me and an uh, ambulance, but all in the meantime, I was dead seeing this, you know, because this guy was going to attempt. And I, I, you know, I think my husband was probably holding me back because I'm like, I want to take control. And challenges will come and what we got to imagine and what we have to focus on is the right words and the thoughts that come into our mind. Even today when I get on a plane, I, I immediately go to Philippians 4, 8 where Sheila think on good thoughts, think of a good report, think of things that are uh, uh, worthy, think of things that are, are good, that you're going to get off this plane, you're going to walk down that other side of that airport, you're going to get you out coffee, you're going to see your friends and everything's going to be all right. That's what I got to do. I got to feed my thoughts and I got to let my words, I got to be very careful. I can't get on the plane saying, I am so afraid that something's going to happen on this plane. Because you feed that thought, that's the direction that you're going to go, and then you're trying to control everything. I personally, I personally, you know it's helped me a lot? I don't want to breathe one more breath that God doesn't want me to breathe. I want to walk in his perfect will, and when he's done with me, he's done with me. You might be sad, but I'm going to be happy in heaven. I mean, we have to understand that we're not in control of our life. He's in control. He's our creator. Isaiah 41 just simply says in verse 10, I picked you, and I haven't dropped you. I mean, I feel like sometimes, have you really picked me? I mean, I loved when, you know, in school, I would try everything I could to be picked first, you know? You know, and they just ignore me because I was one of the slow ones. And, and, but when I think about God, what He's done, he's, He picked me. He picked me. He thinks that I can handle this. I can make it through this challenge. He picked me, and he hasn't dropped me. So, Sheila, don't, don't panic and don't go into anxiety. Come on, I'm going to be with you. There's no need to fear, for I am your God. I'll give you the strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady. I'll keep a firm grip on you. 
Mom, he hasn't left you when you're trying to teach your child what to do, or when your child feels like, you feel like, you know, what, what was this kid made of? You know, he hasn't left you. He's going to be there. Don't panic. God's going to help you through the situation. He's going to give you wisdom. Whatever you're, you're needing to go through, God is right there for you. And then number three, have the courage to trust God. You know, somebody said, feel the fear and do it anyway. Joshua 1.9 says, be strong, be brave, be courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't panic. For the Lord your God, he is with you. You know, my, my husband, when he uh, had the Bermuda accident where he, uh, we were in Bermuda, we were celebrating our 25th year anniversary. And by the way, honey, we're going on 40 years this year. 40 years. Just wanted to remind you. Because, you know, earlier I think he said, you know, we've been married for over 30 years. I think we need to get the f four in there. I know, time just goes by so fast living with me. Isn't that so sweet? Oh, yeah. That was wisdom that God just gave him right there. The right words at the right time. We were in that Bermuda accident and... So much bravery I saw in him when we were airlifted and had to come back to Harborview Airport. And um, there was the best doctor, orthopedic surgeon, that looked him in the eye through all the x-rays and everything and said, you know, you got to have surgery. You're going to this cracked pelvis. We got to immediately get you into surgery. You can't be walking on this. And um, that bravery, that courageousness of trusted in God. Now, we believe in surgeries. We believe medication. You know, there's, there's times for everything. And if you're going through anxiety and you need to go get help, go get the best help, walk, walk yourself through it. But my husband looked at me and he said, I don't think I'm supposed to have this surgery. And we need to go home. And I remember at first thinking, are you serious? Because you can't even walk. How are we going to get you to the restroom? But what we got to recognize is when you were, as a, you were a child, when you fell down and you hurt yourself, you had the ability and God the Creator created you to heal yourself. Again, in that situation, there's always time for surgery. But I literally saw with just in a matter of weeks, my husband's pelvic bone that was cracked was healed. Now, when you look at the situation and you think about it, we oftentimes forget that. You know, I know when, when Jody would fall on a bike or even her little boys right now when they fall, I immediately, you know, I'll hurry up and because I'm a good mom or Gigi, I'm going to wash the scars off, clean it up, and I'm going to put a Band-Aid on it. And then I look them in the eye and I'm like, you're going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. Because you and I know when we have fell before, we got our scrapes and we, our bruises, it all healed itself. It came back together. And so it is, you were made to take loss and recover. You were not made to sit and stay in a place of hurt. So is your emotions. They're capable of healing themselves if you are courageous enough to take the challenge Challenge not be in control, but let God do what he has already designed your body and your physical being and your emotionally being to do. And that is to heal itself. You can walk through emotions. You can walk through hurts and pains, but you're not supposed to stay there. 
you're supposed to get back up again. You were made to take the pain and recover. You were, you were made to recover from someone who has abandoned you. You were made to go through a divorce and see that your life is moved forward from that situation. You were made to handle whatever you're going through with your children. You were made to whatever you handle, have to go through on your job, whatever you're facing with the report from your doctor, whatever you're facing on relationships that don't seem to be running smooth, you were made to overcome the situation, to heal, and God do the work for you, and you stop controlling how it's supposed to be done yourself because you were made for this. For this time, for this situation, turn to somebody and say, you were made for this. And just like that child crying right now, <laughs> that child feels like, I got pain here, but see how they just smoothed it over? <laughs> I feel like a baby sometimes when I'm going through something, I'm like, ah! I want it my way. Pastor Ryan talks about uh, in Growth Track how he had to have surgery and they're wondering how they were going to do the surgery and get, get the surgery done as far as he had to go to West Virginia to do this surgery. And this was before, his, before he got married. And he walks into our, our home one day, and this is in July, and he was praying for God that the surgery, that it would be available, the doctor would be available for the surgery in August of that year because he was getting married the next year in February and you needed like six months to recover. And he walks in in July and he said, man, I'm just... I'm just so discouraged because I have this surgery and I really wanted it in August, but the doctor cannot do this surgery until October 19th and 20th in Virginia Beach. It's the only doctor in, in America that does it and I have to go there to do it. And uh, I, I was just hoping for something different. And I, I looked at him and I picked up my phone and I looked at the, looked at the calendar and I said, we are going to be there in Virginia Beach speaking at a conference October 19th and 20th. We're going to be able to be in the waiting room praying during that surgery. Just when he thought that his timing of August was the right time, God already had it in control. Challenges that you're facing, you want it in your time? God already has it in control. God's got this. He's got this. Your brilliant design knows trauma. It knows what to do. So whatever the challenge you're facing, you were made for this. If God does this for your physical body, so he does it for your emotions, for your pain. You don't have to wonder if you, if you have any doubt at all. You have everything you need right now. You have everything you need in God-likeness to handle this. I went through a challenge when I was a child with uh, uh, abuse, but I, I was healed when I let go finally. I was healed of it. God has given you everything, and as I started off with the verse in 2 Peter in verse 3, his divine power. I want you to get this in your spirit today. Some of you are going through garbage. Some of you are going through struggles today. And you're putting your head down. You're like not even wanting to wake up in the morning. I want you to be like my movers that day. I want you to put your shoulders back. Recognize that whatever comes your way, that you are made for this everything that comes your way you were made for this
And let me close with this one line. I think it's Max Licardo who said it. He wrote a book on uh, anxious for nothing that just came out. And it says, the presence of anxiety is unaffordable, or unavoidable, sorry. But the prison of anxiety is optional. You're going to have anxiety, I'll tell you right now. I'm a pastor's wife. I live with a preacher that could pray faith over me. He could speak faith over me. And I tell you, I live with the possibility of going on to a full-on anxiety attack. But I have made up my mind that I am going to avoid it putting me in the prison of breaking me down, that I'm going to keep my shoulders back and I'm going to just speak to myself, which I love cell phones right now because you, you know you can talk to them without it being up at your ear in the car and people think you're talking on the phone and what I'm doing, I'm in my car and I'm talking to myself. Sheila, you are made for this. Sheila, you can do this. Sheila, you can handle this. And they don't know that I'm talking to myself. They think I'm on the phone. Woo. Okay, I gotta stop. I'm gonna pray over you. They're in Bellevue online and right here in this, this whoever is listening. There is, whoever is listening, listening, this is no accident that you're here. You're either facing something or you're getting ready to face something. Father, right now, I pray for moms. I, I want to pray for every young mom right now. There's some mamas that are losing sleep at night. And I speak that when they lay their head down to go to sleep, that God, you will... You will renew their, their mind, renew their strength, give them the peace that they need, give them the bravery that they need to face the next day. May they recognize they were made for this. Pray for moms of teenagers, take on the challenge that they will recognize they were made for this right now to be the mom of that teenager. I pray for that man right now that been praying for that promotion and now he has that promotion and the weight is very heavy on him right now. I speak, God, that any anxiety or anything that might cause him to step back from the promotion, that he will put his shoulders back Take the challenge, let go of the control, be courageous and brave and recognize that he was made for this. It's time for men of God to take their place out there, rise up to the, the promotions, the positions, and may they walk in your strength today, God. Pray over every young person today right now, and it's hearing my voice. Every youth, every young adult, may that anxiety that as they look at that social media, that they don't become just overtaken with being, uh, uh, comparing themselves with that, that social media situation, but they recognize that they are to be who they are to be. They're to be themselves. Not comparing, but God, allow that anxi anxiety to not be in their life, that they take control and they move forward and be in who they're supposed to be. I speak it over them, that they take the challenge, it, they t and they let go of control and let you, God, lead and guide them to the next phase in their life. Thank you, Jesus. Some of y'all today, before you leave, you just kind of need to throw it up to them, whatever that challenge has been. You just kind of say, man, I give it to you, God. 
I'm made for this. You're going to help me. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be courageous. Nothing's going to stop me. I want to pray a prayer to close today that is a life-changing prayer with you. You look at me in the eye for just a moment. And if you have never prayed the life-changing prayer asking Jesus Christ to become your Savior, become Lord of all, I'm going to finish with that prayer. And there's some of you that are sitting here that you've been away from God. Maybe mom invited you today. And you recognize you've had some anxieties. You recognize that you've been trying to control some things. This prayer, making Jesus Christ Lord of all, that's what you need. That is what you need. And when you pray the prayer, you're releasing, you're giving up. And no, that doesn't mean that you're a wimp. No, you're just partnering with a higher power. You're power you're, you're, you now got somebody that is back there and cheering you on and walking with you and you're just going to do greater things. So we're going to pray this prayer and everybody's going to join with me, but you're going to pray the prayer and it's going to change your life from this day forward. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, welcome to my world. Forgive me of all my sin. I ask you, Lord, to be the leader and the Lord of my life. May I never be the same again. May I move forward. And may I never look back. I'll take every challenge and I'll put you in control. In Jesus' name. Turn to somebody and say, you were made for this. Tell the other person, you were made for this. Let's give the word of the Lord a good hand today.